In the previous lesson, we configured the Claims to Windows Token service so that it could create forwardable Kerberos tickets that would be used by various services that delegated credentials, like Performance Point and Excel services. In this lesson, I'm just going to show you what kind of configuration you need to make an Active Directory in order to enable that. It's not really that complicated. You just need to make sure to get the steps done in the right order and put things in place. Uh, typically, in a farm, this might take a half an hour, an hour to do but it is very important to plan it correctly so the changes you make are accurate. This lesson will not be a complete and thorough examination of how security works in the SharePoint environment. I'm going to point you to an excellent white paper from Microsoft on exactly that topic written by Kai Uncroth. It's Microsoft BI Authentication and Identity Delegation. If you have not read this and you are attempting these kinds of configurations, I would like you to watch this video then go and read this document immediately because this will explain a lot of the underlying theory and what's really happening when these services are running. It will make your troubleshooting job much, much easier in case you do run into trouble. That said, let's go ahead and make the configuration changes. So I'm going to show you a document that I have here that kind of documents what we're going to do. There are some requirements in order for this delegation to work. All the servers that are involved in this configuration have to be in the same domain, meaning the SharePoint servers. So my SharePoint servers and my backend database servers need to be in the same domain in order for constrained delegation to work. The client computers don't need to be. They actually could be in a different domain. They could actually be a web browser running on a Mac in, out on the internet. But all of your servers do need to be working uh, together. The time of the servers need to be synchronized within five minutes in a domain environment that typically is a given. However, Kerberos is designed so that if a ticket is sent uh, more than five minutes away from when it's going to be used, it will just fail. So if, if you do have everything right and it's still not working, at least just check the times, make sure they're synchronized. And then Kerberos delegation is, is designed using uh, DNS A records. So if you're delegating to DNS names, they need to be A records because Kerberos will do uh, query lookups based on the A records. At least that's um, the, the current uh, state of affairs, uh, perhaps in a year or two that might change. But, uh, but if you are having trouble and you can't explain anything else um, and you are using DNS records, for example, on uh, load balancing database servers, things like that, um, and, and interrogate whether they're CNAME records and see if you can change them to A records. So with that, just a couple of caveats. Uh, let me show you the, the changes we need to make. So we'll need service profile names are essentially uh, phone book entries on the back end uh, that say uh, uh, simply just our records that, that, that tell the world that on a particular server like SPDB3, there's a Power Pivot instance in this case, and it's being run by which service count by service SPDB. So it's forwardable tickets are encoded with the public key of the service running the server. So when the when the forwardable ticket arrives at the server, the server needs to have the private key to unencrypt the ticket. And if the ticket wasn't encrypted with the correct public key, then this process doesn't work. So think of these as kind of just information. It's just directory information. That's all SPNs are. Uh, these uh, will not be set up when you install your SQL instances. Um, so you do need to make these changes. These are the command lines that you can use to do that. So the, the format is just set SPN. S means set an SPN, but check to make sure it doesn't already exist. And then you name the, the service. So msolapservice.3 is analysis services. There's a slash, then an instance name if you have one. In this case, I do, and that's Power Pivot. And then, what is the service account that's running the thing that came before it? So, the service account running this is this. Very, uh, pretty straightforward. You can make those entries uh, on typically on a domain controller. So, I might say set SPN over here on an Active Directory domain controller. If you do have set SPN installed on a workstation and you are a domain administrator, you can make the changes there as well. So those are the SPN entries. Um, you really just need these for all the backend database services, and then you need a couple of dummy records for the uh, Claims to Windows service and, and the BI service. The reason you need these is because later on there's a delegation tab that doesn't show up unless you have these entries in there. It's kind of a kludgy workaround. Then the second thing you need to do, if you've created these SPNs, say these here, uh, MSO Lab Service 3, SPDB2, Power Pivot. You need to allow your service accounts within the SharePoint environment, BI and Claims to Windows, to delegate to them. So this is done 
um, in the GUI or you can do it at command line. I'm going to show you how to do it in the GUI. So I'm not going to show you step by step um, going through and making the set SPN changes, but I will show you the results of that. So if I type on the domain controller that I'm on right now, so I've, I've flipped over to a domain controller and I type in set SPN L for list and then service SPDB, I can see that you know I've made these changes so that all of these SPNs are associated with service SPDB. Similarly, I can look at what I have on the BI account and what I have on the claims to windows account. And these, I just have dummy records. The reason I have those is because without that existing, the, the GUI within uh, Active Directory users and computers won't show the tab that I need. So again, clues your workaround, but uh, you, need, you need, need, do need to do it. Then to actually allow the permissions, if I bring up the object editor for service SPBI, look at the delegation tab, I have trust this user for delegation to specified services, use any authentication protocol, and this is what's called constrained delegation. So what this dialog means is that the BI account, the S service SPBI, is allowed to delegate using any protocol to the SQL server instance on SPDB2, and its port is happens to be 1433. I don't have to enter any of that information, I just have to select it from a list. So if I hadn't done that already, I would just click Add, Users or Computers. Here I put in the service account that's running the services. So S SVC SP DB. And when I click OK, I'll get a list of all of the things that Active Directory knows that that service account is running. And when I initially set this up, I just highlight all of these and clicked OK. When I did that, they were added to this list. So this is what this should look like in this environment. And the exact same setup needs to be done for the Claims to Windows service as well. So Claims to Windows will initially go out and create affordable tickets. It needs permission to do that. Then it will hand them to uh, SPBI for it to use when sending the tickets from, uh, for example, Excel services. And that's why the BI account needs to have those things set up. So with those items set up and the changes we already made to the Claims to Windows service, and the application server, we've done everything we need to do for Kerberos delegation. So yes, there are a few steps, but really not that difficult as long as you can plan that in advance and know what you need to do.